what is up you guys welcome back to the first million podcast if you are watching this on youtube then you can see that we are back on the couch for another couch episode of the podcast i am going to be completely honest with you guys i needed someone to sit with me while i drank my coffee and had my little afternoon break because as i'm going to be speaking about in this episode i've been on a little bit of a new routine, not really, but I'm tired is the gist, is the moral of the story. (laughs) So I made myself a coffee and wanted to sit down and chat. So sorry in advance to my editor for having to edit out all the sounds of me drinking my coffee, but it is what it is. And here we are. When I sat down to write my notes for today's episode, I was like, I really just want to have a chatty, not too long just little bestie podcast episode talking about little changes that I've made in my life and that I'm really striving to make in my life right now um, that I think are going to hopefully make your life easier. Uh, Maybe not even easier. I don't think easier is the best word. Not easier, but better, more empowered, empowering, just more fulfilling overall, because I don't always think that those things equal easier. I think they equal better. And a lot of times like the most fulfilling pathway is not the easiest pathway, which is interesting, right? So I have been on a little bit of a journey. I feel like all year, like since I got back from my big Europe trip last year, I've been on kind of a journey to like rebuild my wellness habits and find a routine that works for me. And it's been kind of hard, but I've been doing a few specific things that I think have been helpful for me to feel much more in control of my business and my life in general. Now, some of these things are very like business related and I feel like I want to do a different podcast episode on like the specific business things that I'm doing to help my business to succeed because I am doing things within organization and scheduling that I'll like touch on today. But a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is more just like wellness based, habit based, day to day routine type stuff. So I'm going to kind of just run y'all through like a list of things that I'm doing that are fueling like my body, fueling my mind overall, just enhancing my quality of life in order to make my business run more smoothly. And it's not just about growing your business, making it bigger. I've like realized this. It's also, it's mainly actually, it's mainly about growing your happiness and your joy within your business because no matter what you're making in your business, if you're not feeling peaceful, joyful, all of these things, it's gonna be really, really difficult to enjoy any amount of money that you're making or any amount of success that you're seeing. So. I think it's very worth our time as entrepreneurs to pause, take stock of what we're doing in our day-to-day like wellness-wise just to see joy and fulfillment and self-prioritization in the day and then like make adjustments there uh, in order to see greater happiness across the board because that to me is true success. I honestly feel like there are so many life updates right now that I need to just do like a life updates episode, but we did officially place tenants into our rental property, which is amazing. And we just have to tie up a few last loose ends with our contractor, nothing negative, just need to get him paid and get everything out of the house. As far as his equipment, he was working on flooring and stuff and our tenants were really gracious and just kind of letting us continue to work and improve the space even when they have been handed the keys. So I'm very pleased with the way things have come together. If I'm being honest, I never even saw the finished product of the property. The last time I was there, the contractor was still working. The place had been cleaned, but it was obviously hard to tell because it was messy just with like contractor stuff. And so that was like definitely interesting, but I'm very, I'm very pleased with the process and I have a financial meeting scheduled um, at some point today with our lender to see what our situation needs to look like to continue to invest. And then I also have a financial meeting set up with my husband. Yes, we do book meetings with each other, (laughs) with my husband and um, our CPA and just all of our people to continue to stay organized on the ball. I think like awareness is so major and me not always being at the forefront of like our financial moves, right? Like I direct a lot of things and can input 
income into the situation, but I am not the person who is in the weeds, investing, managing the money that is outsourced to a variety of people. So anyways, life update with the property is that there are some really sweet tenants in there now. I hope they have a great experience and I hope that we are good landlords, which is a really weird thing to say or to like be. Um, we had some people there working and they thought that we were the tenants. We're just like young to be doing this. I know, I know, I know. So that's been interesting. My people have thought that I'm my realtor's daughter. That's interesting. It's, it's a lot, but I won't lie. Like I kind of like it. Like I don't necessarily mind people being like, oh my gosh, you guys are so young. I'm like, yeah, I know. And isn't it fun? So Anyways, with all of that and just like all of the different things we've been doing with friends and planning travel stuff, my routine was kind of getting out of whack. And so I've made a few like specific changes to kind of just reset and refuel my mind and my body. And one of those things, I think a good place to start seeing as I am curled up on the couch with a blanket and a large coffee at three in the afternoon, I think a good place to start is uh, my wake up time. So I don't know if I've ever talked to you guys about this, but something about me, and I think everyone should know like when their most productive work times are, but for me, I am by far like not no comparison. I am like black and white difference, more productive and clear headed and driven and just every positive thing when it comes to work in the early morning, honestly, the earlier, the better. I think that if I was uber disciplined and trying to be a little bit radical with it, I would literally get up at like 4 a.m. and like finish my work day by nine and then just have the rest of the day to chill, which I'm not going to do. But I have started trying to get up at five and I think it's going to be like a between five and six type of cushion. I'm working late tonight and I already know that I will probably have to sleep in a little bit tomorrow, but on a day when I'm not having to accommodate for like working outside of my normal hours, I am trying to get up a lot earlier for a couple reasons. The main one being, like I said, I am way more productive in the morning. If I have a project to work on and it doesn't get done first thing in the morning, it is probably just not going to happen, but I also am very driven. So I like will push myself to do it anyways, but just the quality of the work I find isn't going to be as good once the stresses of the day have already become part of the equation. Now I used to get up early all the time, like starting even back when I was like in high school, I would get up and like train with the cross country team or whatever. I would train before school. I would be there at like 5, 5.30. We'd be running, do the whole school day, train again after, go to bed. I don't even, I don't know how I did that. But in college, I would go on like these insane, I used to be a big runner and I would go on these insane like long runs before my 8 a.m. classes and I would still shower and get ready and be good to go. And I just slowly but surely have gotten off of the routine and like not to place blame. Okay. Not to place blame, but my husband is not an early bird. No, he is not. Corey is, he likes to sleep in and he wants to like stay in bed and snuggle. And he's like just a cuddly guy. And it's like so sweet, but that is really hard to get out of bed when like your partner is like there almost like holding you hostage (laughs) in the best way possible. But it's not like Corey and I are on the same schedule and like both want to get up early and we're motivating each other. Like I do sometimes wish that was the case, but I value Corey's like relaxed nature for what it is. So I'm not going to like force him to be someone who wants to get up at 5 a.m. But I definitely struggle with getting up and that's been like a consistent issue, especially like I don't even remember really what I was doing before we went to Europe, but I know that since we've been back, which has been like crazily like seven months now, which is insane or longer, wait, longer? Yeah, holy crap. It's been like kind of close to a year. That's insane. But I don't really know what I was doing before that. Since we got back, I just feel like I've struggled with getting on a good routine. I'll get up early for a few days and then I'll have to like catch up and sleep in. And then if I don't have anything on my schedule specifically, then I won't get up early. And anyways, it's just like, it's just all too much. 
And I want to be that person, honestly, who like even on the weekends, like gets up early and I just get on that routine and I go to bed early. But here's my problem. And if you guys can relate to this, I want you to let me know because I need advice. If I know that I have to go to bed really early, I get anxiety and I like won't be able to go to sleep because I'm like, I have to get up so early. And it's not even that I'm like scared I'm going to miss my alarm. It's literally just the anxiety of like, oh my God, my alarm's going to go off so soon. And if I don't go to sleep right now, I'm only going to get this many hours of sleep. And so it's weird. Like this morning I met my best friend for a workout and it was at my house. Like we worked out in my gym that I have in the garage and I was like having a freaking panic attack like all night long. Like I, and I struggle with anxiety, you know, on the day to day, but it was crazy. I woke up so many times I couldn't go to sleep. And so that's something I'm working through, but I feel like if I keep getting up early, then it will get easier because I'll just be so tired that I'll be able to go to bed at night and I'll just get on that routine. But I think it's going to be something that I have to stick with and like actually dedicate a lot of brain power to. So getting up early, that's a big change that I have made and it's something I have experience doing, but I'm like trying to maintain that. But other things that I'm implementing within the wellness sphere actually have to do with my house and how I'm handling that. Actually, no, let's put a pin in that. Let's come back to that. Since we're on the topic of exercise, I think the most, or wait, no, you guys, I'm so tired. What the hell? Since we're on the topic of wellness within the realm of sleep, oh my God, then we can kind of move on to other more like tangible wellness habits. Let's talk about exercise. My exercise routine, I've been revamping that. If you're an entrepreneur who is not prioritizing moving your body on a non-negotiable schedule, get on that because seriously, it's so easy to just sit at your desk all day and just work, 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 like strain your eyeballs, looking at the screen and not like not prioritize exercise, especially if you're in like the health and wellness industry, you guys, like, and you're telling other people to move their bodies all day, like look in the mirror. Are you prioritizing movement and keeping your own body, you know, healthy and your mind healthy through movement? And a lot of times, like from the health coaches I work with, they're like, no, I'm not holding myself to that same standard and I'm not scheduling it in as a non-negotiable. So for me, I have been on a routine. I've been trying to work out um, probably four to five days a week with activity on the daily. And I've always been super active. I've always been an athlete my whole life. And it used to be running, it used to be swimming, it used to be, you know, I would lift weights and do all kinds of stuff like that. And now I'm trying to do a more balanced mixture of stuff. So I joined a Pilates studio. I'm doing Pilates once a week. I'm liking that. I think I'll continue with that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes once I start traveling. I'm going to have to be like making up my own routines, but we will see. So I have Pilates once a week. I try to lift like twice a week. I do like lower body lifts with some compound arm movements. And then I will train like a circuit workout. That's a new thing I'm integrating, which is what I did this morning. Also contributing to my exhaustion, but something like an F45, berries, something like that. I actually haven't been going because we don't even have a berries here and the F45 is kind of far away and I'm not good for a membership because I leave town too dang much and I sign up and then I immediately have to leave. So I just do that in my garage and then I walk a ton because even when I work out, you know, in the morning, then I'm just like sitting on my butt all day or walking around the house and I still feel like I need to get in more movement. So I've been walking a ton admittedly not the most enjoyable thing because it is so hot where I live, but it is good for me. So I walk and I listen to podcasts and that has been really, really enjoyable. But I noticed that that does help me sleep, which helps my productivity, which boosts the success of my business. Y'all catch the drift. Prioritizing movement as a non-negotiable in my schedule is essential. I've also made some changes with my nutrition, which has been interesting. I, ever since I've like worked from home, I feel like I've done pretty good with food, but you go through your phases, right? Like you go through your phases with eating such as a phase of mine would be like not eating lunch because I just don't take the time to take a lunch break and I just kind of snack during that period 
and I wait way too long to eat breakfast. Again, if I'm not getting up early enough, I don't get hungry right when I wake up. So I'm waiting and waiting and then I don't have defined meal times. And then I get major blood sugar crashes mid afternoon and it is just overall not the vibe for productivity at all. In addition to that, another phase that I've gone through is just like continuous like eating. Like I'm not eating like meals. I'm just snacking a ton and I'm eating meals that aren't big enough. So I'm really trying to get away from that as well. I think it's really important if you're going to like be at home all day to have structure around food because otherwise it can be easy to just honestly not be eating enough, especially if you work out a lot. So and that majorly impacts productivity and brain function. So for me, I've actually started doing a little bit of tracking in like a really healthy way for me to make sure that I'm eating enough protein, to make sure that I'm eating enough calories throughout the day, but that I'm also dividing them up into specific meals to make sure that the snacks I'm eating aren't just me standing at the counter eating a bunch of watermelon out of the container, but it's actually me having something with protein or healthy fats is going to actually stick with me, you know? So I've made some pretty significant, in my opinion, nutritional changes that I've really enjoyed. And I, of course, am not a doctor. I'm just a certified health coach and someone who works with health coaches all the time. But unless it directly triggers, you know, an area of disordered eating or something for you, I do recommend if you're a business owner, Being very aware, whether it be through tracking through an app or just keeping a food log or even just like intuitively eating, having some method of kind of just keeping a finger on the pulse of like what you're eating. Are you eating a balanced diet? And if you aren't, you know, how is that affecting and impacting your brain function throughout the day? Because for me, not eat, not eating enough protein, not eating defined meals and overall like having this weird influx of calories I was eating, like not being consistent across the days of the week. That was really causing me issues with my blood sugar and like not luckily not any like serious medical issues, but issues that I could just notice when it came to my productivity. So I highly recommend getting in touch with your nutritional needs and making the necessary changes because between that exercise and managing my sleep, I have changed a lot about the just productivity of my business and I cannot recommend those things enough. A big part of my wellness during the week is media use, media use and intake, specifically watching shows and short form media consumption. So for me, that mainly looks like TikTok and Netflix, insert any streaming platform, but you know what I mean. This is what was happening up until literally this week when it comes to Netflix slash HBO Max slash literally every other platform. Um, my husband and I would have really busy days and we'd be working both on our jobs, on our joint real estate business, on all kinds of stuff. We'd get to the end of the day, we'd go walking, we'd cook dinner, and then we would sit down on the couch when it was probably time to go ahead and go to bed. And we would watch Friends, which we love Friends. We'd watch Friends for like, you know, an hour and a half, sometimes more it's pretty easy to knock out three, four friends episodes. They're only about 22 minutes a piece, I think. So we'd do that and then we would go to bed. But that was keeping us up way later than I need to be going to bed if I'm planning on getting up at five in the morning. So I wasn't getting up at five in the morning. I was rolling out of bed, struggling to roll out of bed by like seven and that was not great for me. I was able to start the day just fine. But that was not serving me when it comes to when my brain works the best to get work done, like my zone of genius when it comes to the time of the day when I need to be working, which is very early in the morning, which was not accessible to me when I'm going to bed at 1130 at night. So I made the kind of radical decision, which it should not be radical, but it kind of feels like it is, to not watch Netflix during the week. Have we been a thousand percent true to this? No, it's only Tuesday and we've already watched Netflix twice during the week, but I will say 
We've watched like one episode with some friends of ours as kind of like a little socialization moment. And that feels different to me than waiting till bedtime, turning on the TV for two hours. So it's been huge. No shows during the week. And I want to be more strict about that even than we are being now because it's just been like a game changer for going to bed earlier and not having so many just distractions. So that's been amazing and would highly recommend. I think that we waste so much time in front of the television. Like that's just us going from our computers all day long and our phones to another screen all evening long and not paying attention to each other. So while I do think it can be a fun bonding activity to watch a show that you both like, you and your partner, or just you and yourself, there are often better ways to spend our time during the week. And for me, like I just cannot get to bed at a decent hour if I'm also watching a show. So that's been a big change. Ideally, I'd like to be replacing that time with reading and getting back into reading, which I was super into earlier this year. Haven't picked up much reading recently, but I think I'm going to be getting back into that. I mentioned TikTok earlier. This is another thing. I do not keep TikTok on my phone. I download it. I probably spend 30 minutes scrolling through to identify what the trends are. I recreate those trends within my niche. I send those videos off to my editor and I delete the or the TikTok app off of my phone. So I've probably only had TikTok on my phone for like a few days total in the last several months because I've just been downloading it, doing my work and deleting it all within the same day. And that's been super important too, because even though try as they might Instagram, you know, they're trying to be TikTok, they're doing their reels thing. It's just not, it's not the same. And I actually enjoy TikTok. I like spending time on there, but it is such a time suck. Like truly, 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 it is so easy to spend not only so much time on TikTok, but it's such an addictive like dopamine hit that your brain gets from watching video like that. I just don't think it's good. I don't think that it's good for promoting a really productive mind throughout the day. So I've taken to deleting the TikTok TikTok app. (laughs) when I'm not actively using it to create content, which is generally every couple of weeks for like two hours. And then last but not least on my list of things that I have been doing to just fuel my wellness, my weekday productivity has been to spend more time with friends. I have mentioned this in a podcast episode before, I think, but I've spent more time with my friends over the last probably six months since a few friends moved to town. I kind of started hanging out with a few new people. I see friends all the time, multiple times a week, and it is literally so insanely phenomenal for my mental health and for revamping my energy midweek. Like I'm not kidding. The best thing I've done socially in a long time is we have started to have Monday night dinners with our friends because Monday can be so just like, ugh, like Monday ish. And we've taking that back and no Monday gets to be fun so we rotate between my friends like who's hosting dinner and it is the best time ever it almost feels like it makes it a four-day week because you know Monday night you're having a great time you come back Tuesday and it's like a little fresh start it is so good and then I'll mix in workouts with friends throughout the week and then I'll usually see friends again on a Thursday so Integrating social plans, especially as an online business owner, is so important. You need to see people in person. You need to talk about things other than work, intermix with people in different industries, and get out of the house. Like, it's so major. I went to a happy hour last week, and I was like, dang, I am so happy at this happy hour. Like, I needed to get out of the house. So could not recommend that enough, just getting out, doing more things socially, not letting yourself get isolated behind your computer screen and just working all the time because I've done that and it is not fun and it's not easy to get out of. Moral of the story, guys, fueling your body and your mind with exercise, food, sleep, like fun, all of the things is so insanely important. The effect that this has had on me and my business in the past year has been so like immeasurable with the positivity that it's created. So many more open doors and opportunities and that shows through in my content and how I show up with my clients, with my leads, but it's just made everything I do in business be that much more enjoyable because I'm a happier, healthier, more whole person. And that's like what I really want for every single one of you guys. 
I know this was a little bit of a shorter episode today, but I really just wanted to chat with you guys about how I am using wellness to boost my productivity, a few things that I'm doing that I feel like you guys could try. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I sincerely hope that you do something this week or today, even better yet, to promote your own health and wellness mentally, physically, to grow your business in a healthy and sustainable way. You deserve to be joyful and happy and have the freedom you're desiring through your business. That's only going to happen if you take really good care of yourself. So with that being said, I am going to go finish my coffee. It's been great talking to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. I really appreciate it. And to like this video if you like the recordings of the podcast. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.